Oh, we got some coaching news far and wide, and let's start locally here. Dave Canales. Could he be one and done in Tampa Bay as the offensive coordinator? Could the Carolina Panthers hire him as their next head coach? Man, the dude was up there having his uh, in-person interviews, the second interview. He did the first one virtually. But this is really interesting. Um, and look, they've, they're, they've talked to like 11 people, right? Uh, and, and they're going to do second interviews with more than just Dave. But this was in-person. And he's one of those guys that I don't think you can discount entirely just because he's only had one year calling plays, you know, with the Buccaneers, but it was a successful year. And so, like, if you take what he did for Baker Mayfield's career and you say, well, he was the quarterback coach, passing game coordinator for Geno Smith, and you've got a young quarterback in Bryce Young who obviously didn't have much around him, difficult rookie season probably could use some positivity right now and also some answers on offense to give him a chance to be successful. Eh, It makes a lot of sense, but you know what makes the most sense is the way people get jobs in this league, you got to know someone, right? It's just like real life, man. You got to have somebody reach back down and, and, uh, you know, not give you a, a hand out, but a hand up. Well, what did the Carolina Panthers do? They hired Dan Morgan the former linebacker, as their president of football operations slash general managers. And where was Dan Morgan recently? He spent eight seasons in Seattle with Dave Canales. I don't know, man. Sounds kind of cozy. Well, that's definitely the quickest way to get a meteoric rise is have people you've worked with before. Get powers of position. Yeah. Positions of power, I guess. I mean, for, you know, and it's not the same scenario, but the, the reason Bruce Arians was in no Tampa question. Bay was because he had worked with Jason Light before. And how did Todd Bowles get his job? Well, it was handed to him by Bruce Arians. Mm-hmm. And Bruce Arians, when he came here, brought his whole team with him, his whole staff. Brought his whole staff. Yeah, they were all available. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, that's, that's pretty much the way it goes in, in the NFL. No doubt. Nope. And, and, you know, these are high-profile, high-stress, high-demand performance jobs, and you want people that you know. Not that just you know, not just trust. what they're capable of, but you know their personality. You know them. You know, right? you, you know, it, it's, it, it goes beyond just the, you know, I could, you could sit there and, you know, know a lot of great football coaches, and you could see the, the plays they call, the schemes they come up with, defensively, offensively, whatever. But it's that person out. Can I work with them? Do I want to work with them? We know how many hours these guys put in. Yeah. You know, and right. so what, what's no, he like when mm-hmm. things are bad? You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And I mean, for Dave, I, I, I assume he has some down times. We've not seen him, but he's generally an extremely upbeat guy. And the positivity, I think, was huge for Baker Mayfield for that entire offense, for the entire team. Just, just, just his demeanor, right? And they were, they were not doing, I mean, they're four and seven. They lost, you know, what? Five out of six, six out of seven. Um, and yet he came to work every day, like he said, like it was first and ten. So Dan Morgan knows that about him. And he, and he spent a lot of time out there with Pete Carroll, who was the same guy, right? Mr. Positivity, all that. So I'm just saying I, it seems surreal to me that a guy who had never called a play before, spent 14 years in one organization, finally gets his shot and comes to Tampa, does a pretty good job with a – you know, sort of retread quarterback in Baker Mayfield. And then after one season, albeit you won the division, you won a playoff game, I get it. But you're going to then become a head coach? Like, wow. (laughs) That's that's pretty fast by anybody's standards, really. It is. But if you're Dave Canales, you kind of hope that this happens now because your star may not be higher than it is today. I don't know that he could be hotter. I don't. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. granted, the offense comes back and does even more next year, of course. But, Maybe, yeah. You know, you helped resurrect Geno Smith's career as a quarterbacks coach in Seattle. Then you get your first head coach or offensive coordinating job in Tampa Bay, and you've got another quarterback you need to resurrect in Baker Mayfield. And it started a little rough, but 
the obvious improvements, not just in Baker's play, but the play calling, the offense, all that throughout the season. Like, if, if I've got a quarterback like Bryce Young, you know, much like Bryce is a little bit like Trevor Lawrence, whose first year was a disaster. Yeah, he, yeah absolutely. You knew he was talented, yeah. but Urban just destroyed the guy. And, and Jacksonville went out and got a coach that works really well with quarterbacks. Positive guy. Mm-hmm. You know, yep. played the position. Um had success I mean that's the one thing about Dave is like you, you know the, the, the number one concern really the only concern if you're the Panthers is how do we get Bryce Young to be the number one pick again how do we because we saw something in him everybody did even Houston would have taken him number one now they got to put people around him because the offensive line is bad there's no running backs you know tight ends running back or two but there's no wide receivers uh you know that sort of thing so but but the only thing you want to do in the head coaching job is find someone who has a way of saving this quarterback, a way of getting him going, whether he brings his own coordinator, that's fantastic, or he's a play caller himself. More likely, it's going to be a guy that calls plays. Um, I don't see them hiring a defensive coach, for example. But that's Canales. I mean, you know, kind of out of the box, but young. Um, not that young though. I mean, he's 48 years old. It's not like he's in his thirties, like a lot of these guys. And he's going to have an instant impact on the quarterback, which is what you want. It's going to be a positive one, not a bad experience. So he just checks a lot of boxes. The one he doesn't check is what's your, what's your experience? You call plays for one year. I have said this from the beginning that just from a temperament standpoint and knowing what the, the head coaching job really is these days, Unless you're also the play caller, which is really hard to do, and a lot of offensive guys do it, some defensive like Todd, but it's about setting the tone. You know, it's about now another big part of it is like what staff can he hire? And if, he, if Canales did get this job, you have to assume he's going to take a number of guys from this staff. One would That's think. I mean, you know, if you also got Seattle staff, which is disbanding. True. Because of head coaching job there. So there, he may take some coaches from there, too. Right. Absolutely, he could. But, um, you know, and that's that's another incentive for teams to start hiring their head coach because pretty soon all these really good assistants that are committed to other staffs are going to be snapped up. And you want to have some options there as far as that goes. So I don't know how much longer Carolina, if they're waiting for a Todd Munkin who did interview once uh, but can't until they're out of the playoffs, um, you know, then, then they'll just they'll just have to hold their water, I guess. But uh, there, there's a number of, of assistant coaches that have been getting you know interviews whose teams are still alive, and I think that's one of the reasons why there's still four of the eight teams I think are are still looking for head coaches. But yeah, I I got the feeling that maybe Canales is confident too. You know that it just feels to me like. If if he's that close to Dan, that that they might have something going there. There might there might actually be some there there, which I would have never said for any offensive coordinator after just one year, whether they had won the Super Bowl or not, right? Um, but but if you've got eight years of knowing the guy, eight years of of seeing the guy getting groomed under Pete Carroll, eight years of understanding how he would relate to your quarterback and what he could do in terms of boosting him back up, you know, building his confidence back and, you know, helping him out. Um, it's out of the box. It's not sexy. Carolina fans aren't going to like it. You know, they scored, you know, Bucks went up there and scored all of nine on the final game of the regular season. It didn't exactly show a, a whole lot of offense that day. But, you know, and then and then what do the Bucks do? Let's say, let's play this out and say, okay, so Carolina hires Dave Canales. Who's your coordinator? <laughs> Don't know, because Dave could take a couple guys. He know? could, although you know Todd Bowles interviewed a lot of candidates last year. He did, and but I don't think any of them wanted the job. Now this year, knowing right. if they get Baker back, well, and well, knowing Baker, he's if, not if, wobbly. Yeah, if Baker's coming back, and he's presumably Todd duck. Bowles is on better footing. Yeah, you know, yeah. last year everyone believed he was on the hot seat, and and they were right. Could easily have been <laughs> fired by the end of the year, and halfway yeah. through the year. Many wanted him fired already. Oh yeah, you know this year he's in a little, he's on a lot firmer ground, and so think. some of those candidates that maybe weren't as interested last year might mm -hmm. be now. Yeah, 
No, they could be. And it's just what you go through if you have if you're a defensive coach and you're hiring coordinators, if they're successful, which you want them to be, about every two years you're gonna have to hire a new one because that guy's gonna get a job. Just the cycle of the NFL. You don't have to do that if you're an offensive play caller because you're already calling play. You might, you know, and and if you have a good defensive coordinator, yeah, they could get hired, but it seems that most of your teams that fire coaches do so. Why? Because their team sucked and they lost a lot of games, maybe the most in the league. So that's how they got the number one, two, three, four, five pick so they could take their franchise quarterback. It's like, oh, well, if we're going to get a franchise quarterback, we should marry him up with an offensive head coach, right? And, and so the cycle keeps continuing. Um, it's a little harder for the on the defensive side. But yeah, I look, this makes all the sense in the world that this guy would have a shot and it could be over by the time you guys hear this podcast, maybe they hire somebody else. I would just say there could still be some changes on the Buck staff. And then coordinator wise, I mean, you have Thad Lewis, who is a bright guy that I've heard for years as somebody that is going to be an offensive coordinator in this league. Does he know enough of Canales's offense that he had to learn this year to keep the ball rolling with that? Or would he do something to entirely different or, is there a team that he might be looked at as an offensive coordinator, which I think is also possible. So, you know, we don't know what, what positions on the Bucks staff are leaving to begin with because they're going to get some, you know, some inquiries about some coaches, I would imagine. Um, there's a lot of coaching staffs out there, you know, and those guys got to come from somewhere. But so there's, I think it's going to be an interesting off season. And then the biggest thing, of course, is trying to re-sign Baker and Mike and, you know, obviously could – franchise Winfield and you got to deal with Worfs and so on and what's Levante going to do and you know and all of that so it's a long it's a big laundry list but it starts with okay what we got to we got to have a plan you know if we lose our coordinator tomorrow you better know who he is today and is he on the staff or is he someplace else and if it's if it's say Thad Lewis well you don't want him going someplace else and then Canales gets the job and now you've you know that would have been your coordinator um so it's a paradox. It's interesting what, you know, as soon as the league, as soon as the last game ends, man, those phones are burning up, you know? And uh, so it's going to be going to be an interesting week or so. And then we got uh, some other news on the NFL coaching front. Sorry, Steve. Is this where we play uh, Hail to the Victors? What are you, how do you, how do we commemorate this loss that the uh, Michigan Wolverines have just had? Well, I mean, when Jim Harbaugh took the job, Back in, what was it, 2015? Talked about bringing championships to Michigan. They've won three straight conference championships. They went to three straight playoffs, won the Natty. Like, I'm sad to see him go. Really wish he would have stayed. And just for but, the news, it, he's going to the to the Chargers, yes, the Los yes, Angeles Chargers, yes. yeah. Wish he would have stayed, and it sounds like he's taking Jesse Minter and his son Jay Harbaugh with him. Yep. But you can't be mad. No, no. Disappointed? I go uh, back to discouraged. Sure. Uh, it sounds like Sharon Moore is going to be offered the job. It does, yeah. Um, I, I is think that a smart a, move? I think he's a great coach. Uh, the qu The biggest question is, can he recruit? My and thing and is, I don't though, know that answer. I don't know. My th This feels a lot like Antonio, uh, what, Pierce out there in, in, with the Raiders. Mm-hmm. Uh, Popular guy did well when Jim was at the uh, you know Holiday Inn uh, when he was suspended. Mm -hmm. But it's you're Michigan, <laughs> okay? Can we just take a step back and go? You got Jim Harbaugh to come there. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And just because Harbaugh missed a few games against I don't know Rutgers and Michigan State or I don't know who the hell. Uh, and this guy won. Yeah, he did. Did he did his job? He kept the he kept the train on the tracks. But that's a far cry from saying this is the guy we want to lead our Michigan men into the future, isn't it? I don't care how popular he is. That's that's kind of what I. Uh, that's what you wonder. Like, he's a tremendous offensive line coach, right? And has done a great job as the offensive coordinator. Yes, and he's loved by the players. That's a problem, but yes. Well, but but Harbaugh was too. I mean, you know what I'm. Yeah, but my but you don't make decisions based on no, um, absolutely not, the, the, absolutely not in-house popularity. You know, you know, but he also got to show his coaching ability. Yeah, granted, that he know. did. That he did. You know, but 
can you coach? Can you do this all year? I mean, it's one thing. It's, Jim, it's not like Jim Harbaugh was suspended and, and wasn't in the game plan and in the practices all week. Jim did everything up. except be coach on the, the sideline. Game. Yes. And for all game. we know, he was yeah. in his ear headset to begin with. I don't, you know. Now, you Sharon know, Moore is a has been known as an up and coming star in college football and an assistant that teams were going to start fine. to go after. So that's fine. Yeah, that's I, great. You have to. You have to. Hope that Ward Manuel and and Jim Harbaugh has a say in this too, that their assessment of Sharon Moore is accurate and that he's going to be a really good head coach. Yeah, you don't know. I, I mean, know. you know, it's much like we've talked about Ryan Day. He had never been a head coach, like right. You know, and and he's done well at Ohio State. I don't think Ohio State's happy. They're never completely happy. happy although I mean, Michigan. they've done they've done tremendous with him. But it's it's going to be. I don't. It's it's not the same as when Brady Hoke said I'd walk to Michigan from San Diego or whatever. But it's you know. a it, you know what I'm saying though. Like, mm-hmm. and I'm I'm not a Michigan man like you, but it just seems like <laughs> wouldn't the bluest of blue blood coaches be running to try to coach at Michigan? Maybe I'm uh, wrong. No, no, they absolutely would. I mean, it's Michigan. You just won the Natty. You're you're the national champions. You're the best team in the big in the Big Ten. Mm-hmm. You're. But yep. here, here's what I'll say about Michigan and and the alumni and the, the folks that run the university. For the most part, they hired Bo from the outside in 1969. But otherwise, all the hires have been internal, except for Rich Rodriguez, who destroyed the program. Which was awful, yeah. The last time, that's basically the last time they went outside the program. So they hire people on the staff traditionally. No, like not necessarily on the staff. They want Michigan men. Yes, that I know. You know, and so Sharon Moore's been there. Like, you know, Brady Hoke was a Michigan guy. He had coached there, but, you know, he didn't work out. I keep throwing this name out here. No one mentions it, but I'm just saying Brian Greasy. Well, but, but they also did, you know, even go back to other sports at Michigan. You know, Bill Frieder says, I'm going to Arizona State, and they get rid of him, and we're hiring a Michigan guy, Steve Fisher. Because he was on the staff and promoted him. He He ended ended up winning the Natty and then got the Fab Five and all that. But, I mean, you know, they brought Juwan Howard back for basketball. He did okay. He's going to get fired at the end of this year. Oh, he is? Yeah, they're awful. After winning Big Ten Coach of the Year? They're awful. The team's awful. Um, They just suffered their worst Big Ten loss in 22 years to Purdue the Mm. other night. That didn't last. Yeah. Uh, They're like like 7 and 13 I kind of liked the hire at the time. but I I did too, but – you know, he took what John Beeline did, and, and John Beeline was a tremendous coach. But traditionally, Michigan likes to keep everything in house, whether that's good or bad. Yeah. Sometimes it, Jim Harbaugh turns out to be good, although for a while it looked bad. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's kind of the way they like to. It goes back to the people you know. Right. They like to keep it to the people they know. Well, there's no surprises that way. Mm-hmm. You know. At least you know how to deal with them. You, so, you, you know you know them. It sounds like most of the staff will stay other than Minter and Jay Harbaugh leaving the strength and conditioning coach, which is a huge part of Michigan's success, is staying. Always. Um, you know, the, the players, you go through the players from the last few years that, that, that have you know gone to the program now and the pros rave about the strength and conditioning program there. That's really the guy that's is in college football mm-hmm. maybe as most important yeah. a coach there is because he's in there with everybody. And Michigan – you know, just wore teams down for the last yeah, three years. Yeah, they were they were just powerful. They yeah. they were stronger and lasted longer than any other team. They Every team harder I mean, longer. Yeah. Uh, Joel Klatt described it. They're like a boa constrictor. Mm. They just they 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 start wrapping themselves around you and then they just squeeze. I mean, you're out of area. Yeah. You know, and you know, so that's a huge. So it sounds like he's staying, which would be a huge, huge success. I mean, you know, the other part is is you just won a national title. You've got these guys. If you go outside the program, how many leave? How many this? And how many are you starting over again? Yeah, no, that's all part and, of and it. So that's that is part of it in, in today's world. Yeah, no, it's 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 about player retention as much as it is head coaches. Mm-hmm. So it's, I get it. I, I, I don't think you're know right. if he'll be successful. And I know a lot of Michigan fans are. You know, he's obvious. He's the only. You know, I hope that Ward manuel has been doing. His, Quite frankly, he's been doing his due diligence, hopefully, for the last five years because Harbaugh yeah. flirts with the NFL I mean, every year. So yeah, Exactly. you got to um, have that list, right? Yeah, you know who – I mean, believe me, every every coach that you said, you know, coach is lining up for Michigan, they've been lining up for five years to go there <laughs> <laughs> because every year he's talking to the pros. Yeah. And, you know. and until lately, losing to Ohio State. Yeah. Yeah. 
So, but it'll well, be, it's, it's going to be real. I mean, Harbaugh has won everywhere he's ever been. He'll win there too. Get and, listen, and he's got a quarterback. Give he's got a quarterback, and give him one or two years to build the organization around because mm-hmm. he's good. They're going to hire a GM. They're already interviewing people that he's familiar with. Which yeah. essentially. You're turning your whole football op over to Jim Harbaugh. He's yes. going to be making the decisions. Yes, he'll have somebody in title that might be somebody to handle the contracts or, and the you yeah know. all that stuff. You know, and and but he's going to make the personnel decisions and yep. and he's going to wear you out. I mean, he may not. You know, I think the burnout the burnout factor is is pretty big wherever Harbaugh goes. You know, but he he will get he will get your team uh, in tip top shape from a personnel standpoint. Mm-hmm. And they will win. They will win games, you know, in short order. Uh, but the burn, John, the burnout should last longer in San Diego or L.A. Yeah, assuming he's successful, because he's not. It's not a general manager who hired him who's fighting against him. No, it's the ownership. He's what picking, happens? He's picking his GM essentially. Right. right. You know, I mean, him and uh, what was it, Jed York. Uh, or, yeah. uh, uh, no, the uh, uh, you got uh, the Trent Balky. Bal- Balky, that was it. Yeah, they did not point, get along at all, and they they did they were fire and ice. Yeah, mm-hmm. and eventually, the ownership chose Balky, probably incorrectly, and then and then they chose Jim Tomasulo yeah. and guys like that. It was yep. awful for yep. a while, until they got Kyle. Um, they made mistake after mistake. Well, but with Kyle, they got John Lynch and. Right. I mean, they, they've made a nice recovery yes. and they've got the perfect opportunity, you know, to, to get to a Super Bowl and, you know, maybe win it. It's just um, Harbaugh is is going to wear everybody out. He just mm-hmm. is. He's just different. And you got to be prepared for that. And it, it might be a. But he also you know, does something else for L.A. And that's bring a lot of media. Oh, yeah. And attention in a market that you're the second team. Much like Aaron Rodgers does for the Jets, and it'll help them. They'll always be the second team, but it's mm-hmm. definitely going to help. Oh, them. absolutely! But I mean, you're fighting for those ticket dollars and sponsorship dollars and attention. Oh, basically. yeah, because you're divided up there. Yeah, mm-hmm. and you know, it's a Rams town. It's not a. It's not a Chargers right. town at all. But he lived out there. He worked out there. He coached at San Diego. He played mm-hmm. for the Chargers. Yes, he did. Which I had completely forgotten about because it's 150 years ago. Um, I think he'll do good. Look, he's a great. He's really a great football coach, and his teams. In that division, you know, um, obviously, the, you know, the monster lives there in Kansas City, but um, they could get good well, pretty quick. If Jesse Minter can build a defense like the Ravens, oh, which Michigan ran the exact same defense because he worked for the Ravens. Yeah, that's true. You know, if you can build that defense in that division and you've got Jim Harbaugh coaching Herbert. I feel pretty good about it. Yeah. Like, I know the division's tough, but, you know. No, they'll win. The, the, I, and I think they'll win fairly quickly. It may not be, you know, a Super Bowl team this year. It's interesting because now he's in the AFC. Last, you know, when he coached in the NFL before, of course, the mm-hmm. NFC. They play the Baltimore Ravens and John Harbaugh. Yes, so we have will. a Harbaugh Bowl this year. No, they played in the Super Bowl. So, I mean, any other Obviously, game. Obviously, getting bigger know. than that. I'm just saying, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not like novelty, but. Um, what happens when Taylor Swift meets Jim Harbaugh? <laughs> when Kansas City plays Los Angeles twice a year. Yeah, they'll be asking him about it. He 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 won't know what he's. Yeah, she's she's something, right? Like yeah, uh, Swift. We like to run Swift. Uh, he won't he won't have a clue. Jim is all football man, and and I will say this too about him. Like I always, he's been trying to go back to the NFL. He had that conversations with Minnesota and all of that. I do believe in his case, he probably could have stayed at Michigan for the rest of his life. I think the NIL and the transfer portal ate him alive. Well, and I, I think the pending NCAA. That, that's the biggest I mean, thing, right? You know, I mean, because you may not get to coach, right? So what are you staying for, you know? Exactly. But now what does that do to the program? Are they going to get hammered while he's in, in, with the Chargers having fun? I mean, you know, will there will be some punishment? Possibly. The NCAA could just kind of say, hey, Harbaugh, if you come back to college, this stays with you. Mm-hmm. That's what um, it should do. But then yeah. again, by within two or three years, the NCAA may not even be around anymore. Who knows? But <laughs> it might just be the Big Ten and SEC doing their own thing. It's good for the NFL. Bad for Michigan, but really good for the NFL. So I'm excited to see how he does. I think he's going to do very well. We still got 
some jobs out there, uh, including the one in Carolina. Yeah. Uh, Ryan fast... Callahan's the coach of the Titans. Oh yeah, now. that's right. Yeah, he got in, he got announced. Yep. Um, and then your boy, your quarterbacks coach Pilcher, got promoted to offensive coordinator, which is why he didn't take the job here last year. Yep. Because he figured Callahan would get a head coaching job. Yeah, he was up for jobs over. last year. So he was. Yeah. I I really hope Raheem gets one. I think Raheem went to the right organization. He'd be very successful. Mm-hmm. Um, I I think Todd Bowles is or uh, not Todd Bowles. I think uh, Todd Munkin is a great coach. What he's done with Lamar and that offense, and he's got the temperament to be a head coach. He was a head coach at Southern Miss years ago, um, but very competitive, good communicator. Uh, you know, you look at what he's won at Georgia and now what he's done for Lamar. Like that, that seems like somebody will wait and and try to get him, but maybe. Maybe not everyone's cup of tea. You know, he's he's a little bit older. Um, yeah, you just don't know what these owners, you know, what they think a head coach looks like. Most of the head coaches out there are between thirty and forty years old, so the, uh, there's, it's easy to look for the young guy. But uh, I don't know. I don't know how it's going to go. It, it and I think there could be some staff changes on this staff, and and whether that involves Canales or not, um, they they could have some 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 guys being coveted in other teams as coordinators off off this staff right here, which would change Todd Bowles uh, and all that they did this past season. So you have to replace those guys. Hey, for the past 14 years, the skilled pros of May Electric Solar have been re- installing solar energy systems in Florida. They provide the most reliable solar equipment, the best installation methods, and service while helping homeowners cut energy costs with an environmentally friendly investment. May Electric Solar uses their own skilled employees, never subcontractors, and they've always offered the safest and most reliable equipment. Well, now May Electric Solar offers a 30-year no-cost equipment replacement and labor warranty, and that means that for 30 years, May Electric Solar, backed by Solar Insure, means your roof electrical and equipment replacement is all covered. Solar Insure even survives May Electric Solar, and it is owned by the homeowner with no deductible or additional fees. Now, this policy will transfer to new homeowners with no fee. It's not a blanket insurance policy. In fact, only the best contractors are allowed to be part of its program May Electric Solar's reputation in history and workmanship has earned them this membership. To learn more about May Electric Solar's installation and their 30-year warranty, call 727-819-2862 or visit mayelectricsolar.com. Tampa Bay Lightning trying to continue their winning ways. They've won, what, six out of seven? They're uh, at home against Arizona. Yeah, they got Arizona tonight. They got New Jersey on Saturday. Then they get to what, ten days off for the bye week and All Star break. So, I almost don't um, want them to quit playing though. Like you're, you know, this is the best hockey they played. You don't, but the the whole league basically gets a week off at this point. Uh, yeah. Either this next week or the week after. Uh, looks like the Lightning sent down Phil Myers to Syracuse. Hmm. So that probably Eric Chernak or Hayden Fleury are set to come back tonight. Somebody's back, yeah. Uh, Sergachev, they've already said, would be after the All-Star break. Uh, but those two, I'm guessing maybe Chernak's the one back, but don't know that for certain. But with Phil Myers being sent down, um, that kind of indicates they only have six defensemen without them. Uh, Mitchell Chafee was called up because Austin Watson was placed on IR, so. Uh, he's played one game this year with the Lightning, so more young guys with all, coming up. With all these new guys, like, do you think that? And I heard somebody say this today. Mm-hmm. Do you think that that the influx of, of you know out of injuries and necessity they brought these guys up? Do you think that that kind of helped kickstart things a little bit? I think it probably overrated? it probably it probably brought some enthusiasm in the room. You know, these young guys, and and, and they've come up and they've done well too. It's and not like it's not like just well. coming up and okay, you know. But, it's, but you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, this team's been together so long. It's like, okay, let's go out here and play another game. Oh, mm-hmm. it's the power play. Oh, it's Stamkos over there on the point. Like, it's – you have a veteran team. You got a mix, but you got a veteran team. But then you inject that youth where these guys are hungry, man. Mm-hmm. They're trying to fight for every shift. Well, I think and, it's I think it's done that. I also think it's probably brought an enthusiasm at Syracuse, too, because all these guys are getting chances. So now every shift, every practice down there means something. That's true. And yeah. because they want, you know, I want the next call up. And, I want to be the guy. Yeah. You know, it's, you didn't want injuries to Chernak and Sergachev and Flurry no, 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 and no. Tanner Janot and you don't want those injuries, but, but in a weird way, it's allowed that they've had such a cap crunch for years. They, they can't call people up like, yeah, like, like they've had to, teams. they've had to play with 17 or 16 skaters instead of 18 mm-hmm. because they don't have any, have any cap space to call anybody up when people are hurt. Yeah. Is by putting people on 
LTIR, which Sergachev is in, in that, all of a sudden now you have cap space to spend during this time. So you're able yeah. to call these guys up that in the past you struggled with. Right. So right. It, it's it's a reward for these guys, but it's also a chance for you to see what they do. But it's I think it probably has brought a little enthusiasm in the room. I mean, you know, you know, players, you know, you see that first goal, that first game, the rookie lap. The, like, no, it's you know, cool. There's juice. There's yeah. juice. It reminds it really you when is. you did it and, and this. And, yeah. You know. Why they rediscover the game. Look how much joy these guys play. Look how hard they're playing every mm-hmm. shit. You know what I mean? Like, it's life yeah. or death for them. And you got guys like Lilleberg who are laying some big hits and stuff. And, and, you know, that and, and just jacks That's people like, up. Yeah, and, that excites you. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's good to see. I mean, the Lightning, like I said, for last couple of years, because they've been so tight to the cap, haven't been able to do this, yeah, and and bring up these guys and, and you know their prospect pool's been ridiculed for years, mostly because they've traded most of them in the they draft don't have picks. picks. Yeah, but they've got guys coming up and they're making an impact. You know, Lilleberg mm-hmm. and Crozier as the third pair defensively has done fantastic. Mm-hmm. They're still making some mistakes and growing, but you know, but to step in and, and to have a, a, a rookie pair that both guys have played less than ten games in the NHL, yeah. Like in, in in performing as well as they are, and you see them out there in some big situations in the game. Of course, I think that does energize the team. Well, all I know is they've gotten twelve of the last possible fourteen points, so that's pretty damn good. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot in you know Tuesday night when they won, almost every team around them that played in the standings lost. Yeah, and yeah. you know points percentage wise, going into Wednesday night, I didn't. There wasn't a lot of games on Wednesday, but points percentage wise, which we've talked about, they've been behind everybody, right? They're mm-hmm. seventh in the conference now. That's a playoff spot. Wow. Even That's though impressive. they've got, even though they've played more games, games than others, hand, yeah. But their points percentage is better than nine of the teams in the conference. Hmm. So you're you're right where you need to be now. You just need now. What they have to do is is put together those you know three games in a row. Four. They don't have to do a ten game win streak. It would help. But yeah, but yeah, you know, win three, win three or four, uh, and then five and then, out of seven, and then don't you know. lose more than two in a row. Yeah, exactly. But now, there was a time when they didn't lose two in a row ever. Dave Michigan was pointing this out on Wednesday. So since the three days before Christmas, the Lightning have played sixteen games now. Pretty good, saying almost a quarter of a season. That's about a fifth of the season. They're eleven and five. Not bad. The amount of games they've given up three goal or more than three goals. I believe it's three. Mm-hmm. And one of those was a four one loss where the fourth goal was an empty netter. Sure. You could make an argument you don't even count that one as it's three mm-hmm. goals because with the goalie in net, there was only three goals given up. Mm-hmm. Or so you know, they've done a much better job of keeping that puck out of their net, which is why they're winning which is what we're used to. They've gone from 28th, 29th in the league defensively in goals against. They're 22nd now. Yeah. Like they're moving right. up the standings. With that goaltender, you need to be play better in front of them. You'll yep. be fine. And you he know. looks like he's finally getting back into shape. Back to the Vazzy. We know. I mean, when he first came back, he was good, but, it, you know, it wasn't – he wasn't Look, what, man, what you're used to. There's got to be a mental hurdle, a physical hurdle. Like mm-hmm. all that stuff's real in sports, and we know it. Um but they're starting to hit their stride now. Meanwhile, what in the name of Joey Knight is going on with the men's basket bulls over at USF? How about winning their 10th out of 11 games? That's unheard of, man. And another comeback win. They were down nine points to Temple fairly late in the second half. <sighs> and they win 75-69 on the road. Yeah. Case and Pryor has been fantastic. Yes, indeed. And, uh, you know, I mean, they've won 10 of them. They beat Memphis. We talked about beating Memphis and coming from 20 points back on Memphis. They got votes in the last AP poll. Mm-hmm. And they should continue to get votes. And now they might they might find themselves in there somewhere at 25 or somewhere. But, yeah, the comeback at Memphis to me was the one that made me a believer. I was like, I looked at that game. They're down 20, dude. And I'm like, yeah, this is who they really are. Mm-hmm. And I'll be damned on the road to come back. And you talk about confidence now. Mm-hmm. Well, Holy cow. And it's the next two games, including tonight, that it's one thing to come back on Memphis and, and overcome that 20-point deficit. But then you can't come out the next game and lay an egg. Mm-mm, mm-mm. And they didn't. And they've won the next two. And so you know that's what you want to see out of a, a, a new young team is you know that, okay, you're taking steps and you're continuing to take. You're not, not one big step forward and a couple back. You yeah. know, that, that you're, you're 
you're seeing the improvement. You're seeing the – I mean, they're 5-1 and one in conference play. It's the best start in program history. Yeah, I mean, we're going – we got to go back to, you know, probably pre-Seth yeah. – Greenberg, you know, well, like a Lee Rose. The days. only other time they started five and one in conference play was the 2000 2001 season as a member Holy of God. Conference USA. <laughs> and it's their fourth straight game they've had to come from behind victory. You know who their biggest fan is, don't you? I tell you what, man, I was on the Bulls before they were good. He was at the games even last year when they weren't good. That's what I'm saying. When nobody was there. Yeah. He's obvious from his, you know, lack of uh, crowds around him, but. Hey, good for them, man. Uh, I have to start watching some college basketball all of a sudden, but, you know, yeah. no, I didn't see this coming. Case and Fryer, th- third straight double double. Wow. He's he fun brought to in watch. some dudes that can mm-hmm. play, man. That young yep. coach was a good hire. I don't know how long he's going to be here, however, yep. because if you win like this, somebody going to get you. Well, they're home <laughs> so. Saturday. They're home Saturday against UTSA at four o'clock if anyone wants to Heck head yeah. out to the Yingling Center. Center. There you go. College hoops, I'm all about it. All right, so we'll have our uh, we'll have our mailbag uh, segment tomorrow. We've had a lot of questions uh, throughout the week that we kind of stockpiled up, but we'll do that uh, for uh, Friday's show. We got some special and, guests next week too. So, oh well, do you want to tease them? You want to just put it out there? We we we. I mean, up you to do? you. Up to you. I mean, it's going to be a uh, slow. Are we week committed? Local do we have sports? signed contracts? Do we have? Or do we get the contracts back signed? Or one they... is one is signed. Okay. The others are not signed yet. Okay. You know, well, we're negotiating. They got some clauses in their contract about the NCAA. Yeah, the right, and, it's the writers. You got to have the certain kinds of beer and flowers and different things yeah. they ask for. Well we'll, well, we'll tease one of them. All right. Baseball is here. Ah, I could talk baseball all night. Who you got? Well, luckily, we're going to talk during the day to this person. So No, that's fine, Which too. Which means we don't have to stay up late and record at night. <laughs> that's even better. <laughs> Yeah. All right. You want to leave it there? That's fine. Yeah. Well, it's we're a tease. talking it's a tease. baseball. Because yeah. uh, right what uh, today is Wednesday. I mean, you're hearing this podcast on Thursday, but yeah, we're three weeks from pitchers and catchers reporting as we record. Good lord, this. incredible. And we got the 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 cable deal is all settled. We got all that. Are we are we squared with that? Uh, yet? well, it's either going to be Bally's or Amazon. But I mean, that deal's not done yet. So at this point, it's Bally's. And then I just got to make sure you know I have it on my one of my three TVs here because it's important. Baseball to me, you, you got if you don't have the network that does the baseball. I mean, that's what gets you through the whole summer, man. There's a game on every night. There's nothing like it. Exactly. So. Boys of Summer coming back. That'll be fun. I can see Springs around the corner. The question is, Not will really. they sign anybody? Mm, that one is a little trickier to me. I don't know. I don't know what to expect this year. I didn't think I didn't know what to expect last year. And they well, yeah, all. that's the whole thing. They didn't sign guys last year. And we went, oh, yeah, everybody's like, whoa, they didn't sign anybody. Oh, OK, that's why they didn't sign anybody. You know, um, you know, no shame McClanahan. I mean, there's some negatives, obviously, with the with the injuries and. Of course, the Wander situation is absolutely nowhere. So you're going to have to overcome that, which is not an easy task. But yeah, won't be long, man. All right. Well, we'll be back tomorrow. Your mailbag questions. We appreciate you guys listening every Monday through Friday as usual. For Steve Versnick, I'm Rick Stroud, the Tampa Bay Times. Have a great day, everybody.